All right, guys, uh, to quote a famous singer, hello from the other side. This is the abacus part of our tutorial. I already defined the work directory, contact tests. I gave the CAE file punch notation name. Uh, if you want to use the material library, you have to copy our old CAE and or alternatively just do your modeling in there. Uh, I will quickly also redo um, the material modeling just for, uh, yeah, that you guys really know how to do it by now. All right, we start with the discrete rigid. It will be a wire, as I said. We'll use a spline. Uh, we start at 0, 20. Go to 15, 0, and then we move up again to 30, 20. Yep, that looks like the desired shape. Our first part is done. We create a second part. Whoops, sorry. Uh, a deformable 2D plan object. Here it shall, yes, this is the base feature. We will only sketch a 2D shell but by using the solid section definition it will behave like uh, a 2d continuum so don't get confused uh, by the wording here so we said okay uh, 30 by 30 block all right uh, material quickly go through this again whoops elastic some plastic definition. I'll make it slightly different here uh, to maybe point out or to force some interesting uh, behavior. Whoops, that's a lot. I think that's enough for the Young's modulus 0.33. Uh, sections, we said, all right, that will still be a homogeneous solid, however, defined by the uh, uh, plane stress mesh that we will assign. So our section, our second part is to which we assign the section, yeah, from section. Uh, everything looks good. We can do the meshing, global seats. Um, what did I give for global seats? I have to look it up again. Uh, we said 0.5. Uh, so let's take a look. Oh, that's a lot. Okay. Um, meshing, and then we check the element type, which is by default our CPS4R element. Hi. Um, and yeah, we don't need to change anything here. Later on, we can check here the enhanced hourglass control, but for now, we keep it as it is. And now we come to my absolute favorite part. Uh, it's the meshing of the spline. And we set an approximate global side of two, and then uh, let's go to, let's say, 0.2 for the curvature control. And now look uh, in this region. If I change it to 0.5, uh, you see uh, it becomes more dense. So here, still, uh, here it says approximate number of elements per si circle, 16. So if you make a closed loop circle, that means 16 would be used for. And as you can see here, the curvature come closer to uh, circular shape, so you have a higher element density in the region of high curvature. And well, let's say, uh, not the tension, but the, the, the rate of change of the tensions, right? So, and now we will, yeah, looks good. And for the element type, I definitely want to show you, it's my favorite elements, it's R2D2. Yeah, it's a rigid, uh, linear, rigid, two-dimensional uh, link element. It's great. 
Um, all right, so let's head to the assembly. We create both our instances and they look perfectly placed onto each other. This stems from the sketching in the part region that I did. However, what did I tell you? Yep, use the offsetting tool to give a little space between the two. So we will first move this uh, a little to the top. And then, yeah, because we know they, are, they, they were in perfect contact, I could have set the offset directly. However, in general, you don't know the geometry of all your bodies so well. So I would rather recommend to do it this way. So now uh, we'll move it down. So this is the fixed instance. Um, no, wait, let me redo it again. So first the movable instance, then the fixed instance. The direction of contact is in negative y direction and the remaining offset, let's give it 0.1 preview and click on done. To have a de better depiction of what's going on, and viewport and then assembly display options, we can, um, no, this is, I think in the parts menu we can also give this a higher resolution. Let's check it out. Let's go to the part module, part display option, and then curve refinement. For example, if we go to extra fine here, then you can really see the sketched contour which is again then discretized by a number of elements, but sometimes people get confused uh, that the structures look so weird. Uh, don't get confused by it uh, because you know this is only to make uh, your the GUI faster and in the end all that matters uh, is your mesh density. So the green structure, you can see these are the single elements. This is what really matters. Right, so for example, you can see and also don't get confused by that this node is somewhere else than this node. Uh, let's see, sadly, I think we cannot, yeah, we can track this point because it's a geometric feature. It's at 15 and later in the simulation, we'll track the initial position uh, of this uh, element node. Okay, uh, head back to the assembly. And the next step would be step, step, energy on, our favorite part of it. Given some space here, put in an initial of a hundreds, maximum. It's the same old game, my friends. Uh, field output. Mm, let's check the current field output and see sometimes the AC yield might be of interest. Uh, AC yield, where is it? Where is it? AC yield, AC yield. Where are you, my friend? Did I miss it? I don't know. However, now reaction, reaction forces and moments are super important. Uh, concentrated forces, I would also say, uh, quite important. And contact here, contact stress here, you can. Um, activate uh, maybe the contact status, but the uh, contact stress is uh, most important. And I don't see the this AC yield. Hmm. Too bad. It's a nice feature. I don't know why I can't find it. Maybe it's moved to the explicit only because it uh, usually gives you an indicator which of your elements are 
plastified already and which one are still elastic. Um, however, so much for this. 